So let's talk about the how and the why. I took this image from looking like this to this after we roll that intro. All right, let's don't waste any time and we'll jump right into this. And in uh, full disclosure, I actually recorded a version of this yesterday and <laughs> it was way too long. And you could actually see the sun setting in the background uh, of uh, the video from yesterday. It was so long. <laughs> so today's goal is to uh, keep this uh, much shorter. I think what's the, the Shakespeare saying? Uh, brevity is the soul of wit. So we'll try to apply that here. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's take a look at the uh, image we've got. This is uh, the untouched raw image out of camera raw. So I've done some correcting in camera raw. And first, let me also say, uh, tell y'all to stay tuned uh, for details on how to um, potentially get a metal print of, let me pop this up, of this image, which um, I'll kind of list the details at the end of the video that I kind of went a little, little crazy yesterday and, and on the fly came up with a way that I'll give one of these away. So stay tuned to the end and you'll uh, get the details on that. All right, so back to this. Uh, and here is the image basically right out of camera, right out of camera raw, as I just mentioned. Uh, this was captured with the Canon R5 and I'll get these camera details out of the way. So, and I was using the 24 to 70 uh, F2.8. Here we're looking at 200%, but you can just see how crystal clear uh, this image is. Uh, just amazing, the focusing that that camera can do. Uh, this was shot at f6.3, uh, 200 of a second, which is the max sync that the uh, R5 can do with, when you're not in high speed sync with uh, my strobes, the Profoto strobes. Uh, and I was at ISO uh, 160, so. Uh, those are the details there on the actual capture. And here is the final image. We'll take a quick look at, at it. Okay, so the main objective with this retouch or edit was to build and visually develop the drama throughout uh, the, re the retouch here. Uh, and we will use several different techniques and ac actually kind of build them on top of each other uh, through this edit and you'll kind of see how I do different things and they all kind of add up uh, to give us that final image. And so here are the layers. There's nothing, nothing too, too crazy as you can kind of see as I scroll through here. But so <clears throat> obviously we got the, uh, the background here. Uh, and just a little, I guess my mental process or mental uh, thoughts on this image. Uh, when obviously this is for Navy football, we've got to take in consideration the uniform here, the colors here. Uh, we're in water. Uh, one of the things I guess that strikes me when I think of you know the Navy and big ships, big open water is more of the blue that you see uh, kind of here on the helmet and in the shoulder, uh, the tops of the shoulder pads. So I wanted to adjust the coloring of the image to, to reflect that. Also, in this image, I know we're, this is for Navy football, but to me, the real hero is this flag right here. So I wanted to uh, increase the dramatic lighting, the drama around that flag. I wanted to bring it dimension, kind of using maybe some old paintings as inspiration. Uh, when you look at old paintings uh, that have the flag in it, they're 
um, they just have such dimension in them that you, know, you feel like you can actually kind of reach out and touch them. Uh, jokingly, as we were doing this, I think I referenced like uh, Washington crossing the Potomac. So uh, those types of things. I wanted to really kind of bring uh, the viewer to the flag here and make that a, a very important part of this image. So to start it out, I wanted to bring in um, you know some element in the background here, which is is where our sky would be. So in order to do that, we would need we need to mask out our um, player here. And here's this masking layer. Uh, click on that, and so you can kind of see that I'm highlighting the mask here. Um, and basically, what I'm I'm doing these days is uh, selecting the subject on uh, this type of file. And so Photoshop gives me a great uh, starting point there, and then I'll come in uh, with a, a brush, fine brush, and you can kind of see where I've worked the mask uh, somewhat here um, to clean up anything that that starting point uh, doesn't give me. Sometimes it's rough around the edges or it'll kind of creep in here and there. But it's a fantastic tool that's been developed over the past couple itinerations of Photoshop, and it's kind of my go-to now to, uh, as a starting point for creating a mask. And you can see the mask kind of blends the background here. And let's pull up the sky. So you'll see here is our sky that I pulled. Let me get rid of him just so you can see the sky. This once again, this will go back to photographing your own skies. This is a sky I photographed uh, during the week. I was on the coast here in South Carolina. And I put a video about photographing your own skies on uh, this channel uh, from that week. And so another example of putting that to use right here. Uh, what I was looking for in a sky is something you know, very dramatic to start with. And what I liked here was how this line of clouds kind of follows along uh, our player and, and his body position here. And then it also gives me kind of a highlighted area behind the flag that we can use to contrast uh, with the flag um, to highlight that element. And then it also gives us uh, an excuse to, to bring in and kind of kick some of these highlights that you'll see in the flag uh, once we get, get to building here. And so once I've got that in here, you can kind of see where my masking, uh, I'm softly going through some of these where these water the water spray is. All this water spray was called in camera. There, there are no other elements that have been brought in. That's the magic of actually going on location and creating images like this. Uh, it just it keeps it all real, and it, we're not making stuff up here digitally. So, whenever possible, uh, I prefer to to get out and do it uh, manually and not uh, rely on you know, magic and post to, to create images. So, and it's always nice too when people, and I've had some already, uh, ask me like, how many images did, did this take? And uh, your compositing is, you know, this, that, and the other. And it was all there uh, to start with. So let's get back to it. So I'm trying not to make this too, too long here. So we can see the, the mask work. Um, you know, it's kind of roughly blended here. The retouching we'll do down the road will make this pretty much seamless. And um, back to the uh, sky, where I'm, I'm still building the drama in the sky. So right here, I've got just a curves adjustment on the sky where I'm kind of pulling up these mid-tones. And then I'll um, show you the mask. And then what I'll do is uh, convert the mask, fill it with black, then paint in the areas that I want to bring uh, notice to. So I'm definitely working the edge of this cloud bank here and then around the um, edges of the flag to kind of um, build that area up there. So I'll just toggle that on and off so you can see that type of uh, effect. All right, right here, this is a, um, a layer that we created, let me turn this mask off, during the shoot. Uh, it was raining obviously and I was getting water on my lens and so by the end of the shoot, uh, I had several water droplets on the front of my lens, and I just used the strobe. Uh, let's see, I can drag this around. And so I, what I was doing, what I did is just fired a couple shots uh, using uh, my strobes to kind of give me this effect on the lens, knowing that it might be a uh, cool element to add in uh, to you know future images. And 
and I, then I actually used them on some of these. There was also some natural um, bokeh, I guess, you know, lens um, bokeh um, or water bokeh. I don't know what you call it when it's on the front of your lens, but there was some of that actually happening uh, during the shoot that um, <clears throat> kind of added an extra element of having been there. And I think I mentioned Petapixel just released an article about this shoot, and so I, I mentioned something in that too. So anyway, to kind of custom put those in, I brought in a whole layer of them right here. And with it being a black background, it's real easy to blend uh, in the screen mode here. And so that's what this is doing here. And then uh, this layer here, I'm just increasing the contrast of that so they show up a little bit more. Turn that back on. And then here's a curves adjustment to kind of bring down this whole uh, sky uh, file. So this, you can see it right here. It's just bringing that down so it's, it's much darker, matches the natural background kind of that we had from that evening and helps seamlessly blend everything else that we're working on. So that helps our water spray um, blend into the background there. And then uh, let's move to our player uh, layer here. We've got uh, hue saturation. So this is a selective uh, hue and saturation layer. So what I'm doing is, is pulling or adding saturation to the front of the helmet, basically where the strobe is hitting some areas of the uniform. I'm kind of popping those with some color, uh, hitting the flag as well. And you back back out. And then this next layer, I'm doing the exact opposite, but I'm doing it uh, on the water because I'm wanting to change this color uh, in the final result. So bringing the color down will help me do that here in the next couple layers. So basically um, beginning the groundwork of changing the color of the water. This next layer is a curves layer, which I'll throw on uh, to check my masking. And so what this does just blows out uh, the edges here of my player, the flag and, and that type of thing. So then I can come back in uh, and make sure that I'm where I need to be with uh, my layer mask. Turn that back off. Okay, and so this next layer is a uh, color layer that I've set to vivid light. Basically, I think I pulled a color from the uniform uh, or maybe even, yeah, I think it was from the uniform. And so then I filled the layer with that color and basically I uh, dropped it in at uh, vivid light at 65% opacity and then masked out some of the areas that I did not want that color to affect um, too much, which the white in the jersey, um, you know, I want to keep the helmet kind of as is, and then I didn't want it to uh, overly affect the flag. And so, and, you know, you can see where I've kind of lightly, I've done kind of a soft brush around there, so it's not a hard edge on any of that, but you can kind of see what we're, where we're headed with the blue color, like I mentioned at the beginning of this. And so, here we've got another hue um, adjustment. This is adjusting kind of that blue color right there. So um, changing the hue up a little bit, bringing the saturation down and then lightening it just a touch. And you can see when I toggle that, zoom in, there you go. So it gives it more of kind of a teal feel, I guess you would say. So, and now we're getting to, uh, these are the dodge and burn layers. So I've got two of these layers on this file. And this is where I come in and really add dimension to this flag. Let me zoom in and I'll toggle that. So you can kind of see what I'm doing as I go in here and I find with my brush, I find the highlights, I find some of the uh, shadows and I brush on this 50% uh, gray layer using a uh, either you know white or black on my brush here. And usually start, you know, use the brush about 5%, go in, find the highlights that I want to accentuate and brush those in, and then conversely find the shadows and slowly build that up. Let me turn that back to uh, soft light. And so there you go there. And I got it to where I wanted it. And then uh, sometimes if I want to take another step, I literally take it another step and uh, duplicate that layer. Sometimes I will lower the opacity to, to fine tune that. And then I'll sometimes also uh, throw a Gaussian blur on that. But here I just duplicated it and kept it at 100% because uh, it was doing basically what I wanted it to do. You can kind of see the, the flag, the details here. 
I got some crispy highlights where I kind of went um, really hard. Um, but I, I, once again, I'm kind of using this guy behind. I'm using the light coming from the side. I wanted to pop that flag, bring some attention to it. Uh, and so let me actually combine these for this. And so when I toggle these on and off, you can see what a huge difference that makes, you know, especially in these areas here. It just adds all kinds of dimension. And let's move over. I'm obviously doing the same to our player here. So just bringing more dimension, which adds more drama to what's going on. So let's back it back out again. And here we are, I'm adding more color. So this is a, a solid, using that same color as before, solid color layer, uh, it's set at fill light, and I've got this at 70% opacity. So this is uh, some of our main color treatment. And then I added yet another one, uh, another vivid light color treatment, and this was more for the water, as you can kind of see our mask in here. So I brought this in to kind of take care of uh, the water down here at the bottom. It was putting up a little bit more of a fight because it started as that kind of uh, murky, uh, yellowish brown tone. Okay, so this next layer here is a uh, combine all layer, which I've set to soft light. And I've set it in an opacity of 30%. And you can see what that does is just brings in just a little more con contrast, more so in the shadows than the highlights. And so once again, uh, building uh, that drama, that uh, dramatic effect here for this image, and this is yet, yet another way. Uh, and sometimes you can mask uh, certain areas uh, to influence you know, certain areas more than others. Uh, but here, I've just left it all completely across the image. I just enjoyed you know, what it was doing. So once again, we're just bringing more drama all around um, the image here. Uh, this, these next two uh, layers are uh, high-pass layers. Uh, this high pass is probably around 59 or 60. Uh, I've got it, I've masked it out the effect around the edge of the flag here. Sometimes you can get haloing or every, just about every time, depending on how far you take it, you'll get haloing and need to watch that on this effect uh, in certain areas. So I've gone in and uh, cleaned that up here, but you can see, let me zoom in again. You can see what that does um, for us as well. And that gives it that extra um, kind of punch. Um, once again, layering that dramatic, these dramatic effects. Uh, the next uh, layer is a uh, high pass sharpening. Basically, well, this is a high pass set at probably like two pixels, which gives us uh, the sharpening um, that we're looking for. Uh, these images um, coming out of this R5 and this, these RF lenses are almost uh, sharp enough without that. And the only reason I'm really working this is this is kind of, you know, a football type image and you know, some of these, you can't make them too sharp. Uh, and so that's why that's here. You can kind of see what that effect is doing. We can go in even to 200% and you can see just giving that extra little boost. Uh, and then, so we follow that up with another selective uh, hue and saturation adjustment here. And I'm bringing back, I'm bringing down the saturation uh, to certain areas here. So bringing it down on the flag and our player a little bit uh, with all the other effects that were going on. Uh, it was just a little too much in my, my opinion. So that's just a, a slight adjustment. Uh, here, I've done another combine all layer and this is similar to you know what I did down here with the soft light, but this is a multiply layer. So this is actually even more so than that. And I've actually left it at 100% um, opacity. But then what I've done is I've come in and painted out that layer uh, to reveal the areas that I really kind of want to draw uh, the viewer's eye. And so that's what this mask is doing here. So you can kind of see we, we're really darkening those edges. Uh, it's almost like a vignette type type situation on this layer here. Really focusing the light to where we want people to look. And that's the multiply layer there. Here, um, kind of working with that previous layer, and this is uh, a overlay where, where I've just taken a white, soft white brush. I'll show you in the normal here. 
and I've painted areas to highlight, to kind of contrast off of what we've done before. So we've been darkening down a lot of areas of the image, and now I'm just kind of bringing back a little punch to the highlights with this um, overlay layer here. And let me set it back to overlay. You can actually use soft light sometimes, but I wanted to go a little bit harder. You can kind of see the difference right there when I toggle those. And for me, the overlay was just the right effect for what we're doing. And when you work that with the those lens elements that I was showing earlier that we created, and so this kind of uh, kind of makes uh, some dramatic lighting, almost like it's coming, you know, from up here, uh, shining down on our player uh, and the flag more so. And instead of having like a cheesy beam of light, uh, I've got these you know, real bokeh effects that were happening that night, and I've just uh, arranged them to where they make sense, at least to me and my interpretation of this image, and with what we've got going on here. So that's basically it. Let's, let's go full screen with it uh, so you can kind of see, you know, where we ended up uh, and how we got there. I'll turn this off. You can kind of see where we started and then where we ended up. And if you see this, uh, or if you've seen this image on uh, my social media and stuff like that, I did end up cropping this in a uh, vertical uh, format. And that was more so, uh, Peter's struggling with the... Uh, screen record, but that was more so because we had some other images that were uh, worked better as a horizontal and I just wanted to have stuff that worked both ways um, with these uh, the water sequence that we photographed. And so you can almost use the rule of thirds on this crop here and stick his, his helmet right there. Uh, and so the crop was something along these lines. I think this is a little bit tighter, but anyway, that's kind of where we, we ended up um, with this image edit. So if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down below. I pretty much read them all. So uh, if you've got anything you want to ask me or uh, any suggestions, you know, leave them down there. If the, you feel this video is worthy, please give it that thumbs up. That helps support the channel. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so YouTube will let you know when I'm here. You can find me on social media at Quants Photo, uh, on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm, I'm actually sitting here looking at this uh, image and can imagine it in a uh, metal print that I've done, or this as a metal print, like I've done some of these other here in my studio. And so, I don't know, what do y'all, hey, would y'all be interested in a metal print of this image? Uh, if so, let's, let's maybe, let's see if this video can get 300 likes. <laughs> I guess we're doing this. Let's see if we can get this uh, video to 300 likes. I'll pick a random uh, Instagram handle from the comments below and I'll get you out a uh, metal print. So on top of that, y'all stay safe and healthy out there. And I hope to be you know, here again in the next one. <laughs>